सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली हाई दिस इज डी के सिंह विद माई वीकली शो पोलिटिकली करेक्ट आई गेस यू मे बी एक्सपेक्टिंग मी टू टॉक अबाउट असेंबली इलेक्शन well i'm sorry for disappointing you you have seen the exit polls results but i'll hold my horses until thursday today i'm going to talk about something different something that may have grave implications for our country if it's not addressed immediately by our prime minister let me come straight to it now how often have you heard a chief minister publicly disapproving a proposed visit by ministers of another state the cm says it's inappropriate for the ministers to visit his state he gets his chief secretary to convey his reservations to his counterpart in the neighboring state whatever happened to vasudeva kutumbakam the cm also instructs administration officials to take action as per law against ministers if they go ahead with the visit i am recording this show on the eve of the scheduled visit by maharashtra ministers to belagavi in karnataka on the 6th of december therefore as you watch this you may know whether maharashtra ministers have relented or defy the karnataka chief minister it looks bizarre because the chief minister and the ministers from the neighboring state are from the same party the bjp and its ally bala sahib anchi shiv sena this political grandstanding is only the latest in the border row between karnataka and maharashtra karnataka cm basavaraj bommai has said i'm quoting him quote and quote we are capable of protecting the borders of karnataka the steeliness of his tone would befit vladimir zelensky when the ukrainian president addressed his countrymen the decades long long dispute between the two states over 800 odd villages in karnataka now threatens to take an ugly turn as the two governments have upped the ante announcing pensions and incentives for linguistic groups kannada and marathi marathi speaking in each other's state Maharashtra CM Eknath Shinde started it. He promised to extend a pension scheme to freedom fighters in Marathi speaking border villages in Karnataka. The Bombay government in Karnataka responded by announcing special grants for the development of Kannada schools in Maharashtra and also pension for those involved in ekikaran or unification movement of Kannada speaking areas. Most of you must be quite familiar with these details. this border dispute has been there for 6 and 1/2 decades what i'm talking about today is the center's silence while karnataka and maharashtra are indulging in such political grandstanding why is the nayan modi government a mute spectator one can argue that these are just you know they are just trying to play to the gallery in their respective states and there is nothing serious about their statements maharashtra deputy cm devan fandamis uh, while demanding the inclusion of karnataka's marathi speaking areas in his in his state has said that there is no enmity between the two states and it's a legal issue that is being pursued in the supreme court be that as it may but raising political temperatures on this issue may lead to unintended consequences because when one government starts talking about protecting the state's border and another starts claiming areas with certain linguistic groups in that state you are playing with public sentiments and that's why i'm talking about unintended consequences maybe prime minister modi uh, was too caught up with the poll campaigns to focus on what might be a mere battle of political of one of manship in karnataka and maharashtra or maybe it's politically inconvenient for the top bjp leadership to get embroiled in a dispute between two states where it has huge stakes the center's seeming reluctance to get dragged into border disputes is however i would say self defeating a party that constantly invokes sardar patel's contributions to the making of india can't be looking the other way as border disputes threaten to turn bloody just about a fortnight ago six people were killed in police firing on the assam meghalaya border they included uh, five villagers from meghalaya and an assam forest guard sparking tensions on both sides of the border 
Meghalaya CM Conrad Sangma, he flew down to Delhi to meet Amit Shah and demand a special probe into what he called firing by Assam police. The BJP which rules Assam is also a part of Conrad Sangma-led coalition government in Meghalaya. Then let me take uh, you to July 2021. Then five Assam police personnel were killed in firing by Mizoram police in a border flare-up. It led to prolonged tensions between the two states, even as PM Modi and Amit Shah refrained from reacting to the incident for weeks. So much was the hostility between the two sides that Mizoram police lost an FIR against Assam CM Himanta Biswa Sarma. It was withdrawn subsequently, of course. The Assam Mizoram border class happened barely two days after Amit Shah had returned from Shillong after a meeting on interstate border disputes. Assam also has border disputes with Arunachal Pradesh and Nagaland. Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma has been proactively engaging with his counterparts in these states to resolve these disputes. But given the complexities of uh, these disputes and a strong public sentiments attached to them on all sides of these borders, Sarma's initiatives have certain constraints. Here the centre has to play a much more proactive role and not just make customary statements here and there, leaving to the warring parties to sort things out on their own. The BJP has virtually driven out the Congress from the Northeast, building a loose coalition with the regional parties that rule the Northeastern states. The centre therefore finds itself in a precarious position whenever these border disputes take a nasty turn in the Northeast. And it's not just about the border disputes. Last October, I mean in October, in fact, a couple of months back, a month back, Uttarakhand police lost an FIR against a dozen unnamed police officials from Uttar Pradesh following the death of a woman in Uttarakhand uh, during an alleged operation by UP Special Operation Group or SOG. A senior Uttarakhand official, an additional chief secretary home, she went public accusing the UP police of arresting innocent people and claiming to solve the case. UP police retorted. They called her remark irresponsible. Again, the BJP happens to be the ruling party in both Uttarakhand and UP. For a party that promises double engine growth, you know, with the same party running the governments at the center and in states, running feuds between states where it leads governments flies in the face of its claims and promises. The instances I am just citing, I mean, they involve BJP-led governments. And these instances are meant to only illustrate the larger issue of growing dissonance and often feuds between states and between non-BJP ruled states and the center. Decades old fight between Punjab and Haryana over their claims over Chandigarh has resurfaced even as Haryana CM Manoharal Khattar has renewed demand to transfer 400 Hindi speaking area in, areas in Punjab to Haryana. As many as 10 states have withdrawn general consent, barring the CBI from investigating cases in their states, in those states. A state assembly has even passed a resolution, that is West Bengal Assembly of course, has even passed a resolution against central investigative agencies. Now NDA governments in the states are at war with governors. You must be hearing all those statements from chief ministers and other opposition leaders and other leaders from opposition parties, non-BJP parties, I mean. Chief ministers often, you know, choose to stay away from meetings convened by the Prime Minister. Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao wasn't present to receive Modi at the airport the last four times the Prime Minister visited Hyderabad. There are numerous other examples of states being in a collision course with the center. Much has been written about these issues and so I won't really go into these details. The moot point is, why doesn't Prime Minister Modi seem much bothered about these? The Interstate Council constituted to support center state and interstate coordination and collaboration has not met for the last six years, although it's supposed to meet thrice a year. The PM-headed council was reconstituted six months ago, but still it hasn't met. Irritants in central state uh, relations are usually addressed through, you know, attacks on each other in public rallies, in political rallies. 
water disputes between the states continue to fester with the tribunal mechanism failing to deliver and the center usually looking the other way i would say pm modi speaks so often about how sardar patel united india through the merger of princely estates uh, with the union of india at an election rally uh, recently i think last month he said that he is following in sardar patel's footsteps as he resolved the kashmir problem so why does the pm choose to remain silent when states engage in territorial fights over linguistic groups their police forces fired at each other over border disputes and the concept of cooperative federalism lies shattered i mean why is he looking so unenthusiastic about the interstate council mechanism it's possible that he finds most of it driven by uh, political considerations and agendas he may have reasons to see political agendas behind behind opposition parties constant that driving is the center and its agencies and institutions but this is not a good enough reason to allow the worsening of center state relations it doesn't serve his you know often uh, stated national building goals is it that prime minister modi finds water border and other disputes between the states too messy to get himself embroiled in well the task of integrating the princely states into the union of india was far too messy following in patel's footsteps is easier said than done that's all from me in this episode of politically correct thanks for watching